All right, welcome back to yet another web chat UI kit demo. Today we're going to be integrating with Intercom in order to set up a live agent handoff. So let's see what the experience looks like and then we'll dive into the code. Let's open up our chat on the right. And here, let's say, I want to travel this summer. When is Greece the nicest? And I'll get a response. Sorry, I can only answer questions about your services and their account. Uh, let's book an appointment. So let's just say, I want to talk to a human. This is not good enough. I want someone with some personality. Transferring you to an agent now. Oh, and I hear a notification. And on the left, you can see a new message has appeared in my inbox on Intercom. And there we go. I have the whole context of the conversation so far with a little bit of a blurb at the beginning, web chat users requested to speak with a live agent. The following is a transcript of the conversation with the voice flow assistant. And then we have the back and forth between the bot and the user all typed out. Okay, great. So I'm going to take this. So let's assign it to me. And now that I've assigned it to myself, we can see on the right, we've now connected with voice flow support, which is the name of my account on intercom. Okay, great. So now let's say, Hi, my name is Ben. How can I help you today? Let's send that off. And there we go. Hi, my name is Ben. How can I help you today? Uh, I need to book a vacation. I'm going crazy at home. It sounds like you're interested in Greece. Now would be a great time to travel. They have an olive festival. I don't actually know if they have an olive festival, but you know, probably somewhere. I feel like that's gotta be true at all times of the year. Great, um, thanks, I'll book my appointment now and then we can just uh, close this because we've helped we've helped out uh, our user so let's close that conversation and now we can see voice flow support has left the chat we're turning to the voice flow bot and now if I say I want to book appointment I'm back to talking to the voice flow bot great when would you like to visit next and it's giving me the calendar. So there you go. That's the experience. Let's jump into the code. All right, so the first part of this is just the exact same as the kind of prototype talk to agent demo that I've done in the past. We just have a talk to agent intent that pipes us into a little card that tells us, you know, transferring you to an agent now. We then have a talk to agent custom action with a path to continue and a stop on action is checked, which will mean that this whole conversation is put on pause while we're talking to the agent, and then we can continue it by basically sending a, 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 a request with this continue path, and then it will continue on. Uh, and the next thing in the conversation is it just takes us into this flow, which just says, thanks for choosing voice flow, and takes us back to listening for an intent. Great. So then if I want to take a look at the code, let's jump over there. All right, and here we are with the code that actually makes this possible. Uh, so we have a couple of different things here on our server. So we had to create a, a small server, which basically hosts a WebSocket connection. This is how our front end talks back and forth with the intercom client. It's basically through that WebSocket connection. Um, so we have a, a WebSocket endpoint here that we expose that you can connect to. You present your user ID and conversation ID, so the conversation that you're having, and that will basically let you listen to messages coming from the intercom live agent and be able to send messages, which will then be forwarded to the intercom live agent. Uh, there's also two other endpoints. One of them is a conversation endpoint. So this is to basically create a new conversation. This is going to uh, use intercom to create a new conversation for you. If you have an existing user ID, it will reuse your user. Otherwise, it will create a new user lead for you and attach that to the conversation. 
and then it will basically send back that information and it will also forward the whole history of the conversation to that to intercom so far so it'll send the um the blurb about what you talked about if i go back to uh over here it sends this whole blurb of what has been said so far leading up to the point where you requested talking to the live agent so that the intercom user can then use that as context for their conversation. Um, so that's the create, and then it, yeah, it hands back the user ID and conversation ID so that you can use those to subscribe to the WebSocket. The web hook endpoint here is what is called by intercom. So this will be called when we have you know, someone assigned themselves to the ticket, when the ticket is closed, uh, when someone has replied on the intercom side, all of those are captured and handled by this webhook endpoint. So to do that, we needed to subscribe to all of those events, those topics on the intercom side when we were configuring our webhook, which is what we've done here. So we've just set up an endpoint. I'm using ngrok to forward this so that it's a publicly addressable endpoint. But I basically just have that webhook endpoint being called and all of these topics are the ones that I have subscribed to, but the, the ones that are actually driving this demo are admin assigned, admin closed, and admin replied. The final piece in this server is the actual socket connection. So here we establish a new endpoint that you can use to connect to the WebSocket. Uh, on doing that, it will basically capture messages. And when that message is of type user message, the kind of the JSON message is un unpacked. If the type is user message, then it will take that and it will send it on to the conversation as if the user had replied with that. Um, otherwise, it does nothing. So this is just meant to handle a certain set of uh, front end events. And this is one of them. Um, and uh, yeah, it's also able to, I guess, restore the conversation. That's just sending the conversation back to the front end. Uh, and it holds on to this conversation socket. So that basically when the webhook is called, the conversation socket that is connected to the front end can be used, reused, and you can send the message to the front end that's coming from the, the live agent, such as we're doing here. We're sending on that web socket some stringified uh, JSON response, some uh, event that then the front end can react to. And that's what it needs to do in this use live agent hook. So that's where the rest of the logic around this goes. Um, and we basically have uh, beefed up the existing example we had before. We still have a talk to robot uh, function that you call. But in this case, um, it is actually it's, it's acting about the exact same. It might have, we might have just changed the system reply slightly. Um, but the talk to agent has changed because now to talk to the agent, you need to actually send these messages over the WebSocket connection and have them be then sent to intercom by the server that we looked at just a second ago. So here we're basically taking the history that exists so far by looking at the runtime session turns, collapsing that into a back and forth between the bot and the user, which is then used to uh, set the context, which is sent to intercom so that they know the history so far before the live agent joins. Um, there's also uh, some information like the user ID that we're grabbing. If we have an existing user ID that was created from a previous conversation, we store that in our session storage. Um, and I also, uh, yeah, create the conversation here. So this is how we actually set it up on intercom for the conversation to happen and we send the history of the the conversation so far the transcript so far and then we'll initialize the socket so when we initialize the socket that's where we actually set up all of the handlers for different messages coming back over that web socket which includes things like the live agent assign which we react to by adding a new message from the system side that says we're connecting you with the the name of whatever agent has connected uh, live agent connect. So once they've actually um, uh, joined the chat, we can also send something for that. And similarly with disconnecting, um, none of these, I, I don't think the connect was not showcased in the, uh, the example, but the disconnect was where when they've closed the conversation, we can act as if the agent has left and then kind of return you to talking to the robot. 
then we also have handler, a handler for the live agent message itself. So most of these you can see are just represented by a system message, but these could also be custom messages if the user, if the developer wanted to render them differently or have like a more uh, a complex UX explaining the, the relationship between these messages and the system versus a live agent, you know, a robot versus a live agent. All that information can be communicated with some more UX if they wanted to. Uh, and they can certainly do that by adding custom messages here and rendering them, which we've showed off in previous demos. But yeah, that's it. That we've got live agent handoff uh, using a server and the existing React library and an intercom account.